The King Emperors knew exactly where to shelter during Peking's hot summer months. In the Valley of Coolness. At that time, a beautiful forested river valley, 250 kilometers northeast of Peking. In former Rehe, today is Zhengdi, is the old summer residence of the Manchu dynasty that took more than a century to construct. This was close to their Manchurian fatherland as it was located only 60 kilometers from the Great Wall of China. It usually took around a week for the emperor's entourage to cover this distance. The Forbidden Palace and its park and gardens are now open to the public, a paradise of the Manchu monarchy. Just as in Peking, the emperor went about his official business in the southern front hall, with the royal living quarters situated in the rear section of the complex. The huge garden with its many ponds and bridges is encircled by a 10 kilometer wall, beyond which are several large valleys. The garden covers 560 hectares and is the largest imperial park complex in China. A unique architectural work of art. From the hexagonal tower of the gods, Shang Diji, there's an extensive view across the park and the surrounding range of hills. Here, both nature and architecture are in perfect harmony. The greatness of the Manchu dynasty is also depicted by the highlighting of various important regions via the construction of various temple complexes. So, eight outer temples were built in a semicircle beyond the palace's walls, four of the temples having been particularly well preserved to the present day. Here, with Changde's magnificent mountain scenery as its backdrop, is the huge temple of the Putuo Doctrine. This was built in gratitude to China's loyal protectorate of Tibet. The Tibetan Potala Palace served as a model for the design of the Putuo Zhongzheng Miao. Due to its similarity with its counterpart in Lhasa, the winter residence of the Dalai Lama, the Zhengdi Temple is often referred to as Little Potala, a clear understatement considering its generous dimensions. Construction of this extraordinary and exquisite temple began in 1767. It took four years to build. The beautifully decorated buildings were the gift of Emperor Qianlong to celebrate his 60th birthday and also the 80th birthday of his mother. Apart from the religious significance, the Putuo Temple also gained much political significance during negotiations with the Togats. The 
The Red Terrace is the main building of the Putuo Temple. It is an impressive and majestic building that is situated on top of a 17 meter high terrace. Externally, the Red Terrace appears to have seven stories. In reality, only three stories lie behind the Red Terrace's mighty defensive facade. The Red Terrace is 60 meters wide and nearly 43 meters high. It's the largest individual building in the temple complex. The facade of the Great Red Terrace is decorated with six yellow and green glazed overlapping Buddha recesses. Each one represents 10 years of the life of Emperor Qianlong. Covering an area of around 220,000 square meters, this temple is the largest of the entire Jiangdi complex. The variety of picturesque views is breathtaking. Beyond the massive facade of the Red Terrace, there's a tranquil courtyard. Fabric gently blowing in the breeze and large ritual vessels add to the grand yet peaceful atmosphere of the courtyard. Once the setting of important ceremonies and colourful festivities, this complex comprises almost 40 halls and buildings. Only on rare occasions were foreign guests allowed to visit the Summer Palace and its eight outer temples. From the roof of the Great Red Terrace, there are splendid views of the surrounding landscape and magnificent mountains. As with most of the other temples, this building faces the Emperor's Summer Palace. Much attention was paid to its highly artistic design and roof construction that is decorated to a high standard of exquisite architectural detail. Today, the degree of meticulous craftsmanship and highly developed sense of aesthetic beauty and harmony of Chinese architecture are an impressive bequest of China's former monarchy. With their picturesque archways, the buildings of Putuo Zhong Zheng Miao harmonize perfectly with nature. The temple monastery of Zumi Fushou Miao is one of the most impressive buildings in the city. Translated, the temple's name is Happiness and Longevity of the Summer Hill, Zumi Fushou Miao. The temple was built in 1780 to mark the visit to China of a senior Tibetan religious dignitary, the sixth Pan Chen Lama. It is a replica of what was his own monastery in Tibet. The sixth Panchen Lama lived and meditated in this reconstruction of his monastery in Tibet. During his stay here, the buildings must have been a truly magnificent setting for the religious leader.
For many years, the Buddhist sanctuary of Zhumi Fuxiao Miao has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is one of China's most outstanding building complexes. The construction of this monastery played an important role in the diplomatic relationship between the Chinese Emperor King Long and Tibet. In 1781, the sixth Panchen Lama was the first Lama in history to visit neighboring China. Many of the Tibetan cultural figures and symbols included in the stunning architecture refer to the origins of their design. On the roofs and terraces, there are traditional Tibetan illustrations of animals such as elephants and mythical-looking fantastic beings. The centre of the monastery is formed by the Big Red Terrace with its magnificent main building, the Elevated and the Honourable Hall. This is a true masterpiece of Chinese architecture and dates back to the end of the 18th century. The more secluded rear section of the monastery is dominated by fine woods, perfect for a stroll and to contemplate this fascinating place. This tranquil courtyard served the Panchen Lama as a place of meditation and inner peace. The monastery's striking multi-level roofs demonstrate the skill and artistic flair of its architects. A total of eight gold-plated dragons grace the ridges of the twin-level roof. Although merely an additional detail, these dragons are one of the main attractions in the monastery complex. The magnificent, mighty roof of the Great Hall is completely covered with gilded roof tiles and gives the building a noble and majestic brilliance. The monastery is an impressive example of late 18th century Chinese architecture. Right up to the present, the original buildings and furnishings are as they were in former times. The Panchen Lama had the pagoda of long life built to commemorate the 70th birthday of Emperor Qianlong. Its green tiled tower overshadows the temple's monastery. An exhibition of Buddhist art is located within the temple area. Even though in the early years of the Buddhist faith, the actual portrayal of Buddha was frowned upon. However, in the 18th century, attitudes changed and Buddha was increasingly depicted with a due dignity in many different postures. Puning Si is another of the eight magnificent monastery and temple complexes in the northern section of the Imperial Summer Residence. The Temple of Universal Peace was built between 1755 and 1758. The complex was divided into two architecturally separate parts. Its front section remained true to traditional Chinese Han design because it commemorated an important military event.
The section emphasized China's domination of the feared Jungas, who were of Mongolian origin. The enchanting Buddhist monastery and temple complex exudes an atmosphere of noble tranquility and grandeur. Artistic stonemasonry adorns the ascent to the main hall in the Chinese section. Surprisingly, the impressive 37 meter high Mahayana pavilion is constructed of wood. It's the tallest building in Puning Si. Beyond the hall are various buildings of Tibetan origin. Containing much symbolism, they also served as the residence of numerous Mongolian officials. A steep nine meter high stairway leads up to the heart of the temple complex. Military single-mindedness and diplomatic prowess distinguished Emperor Qianlong among all others. Thus, this structure naturally flattered the representatives of the Jungas. Under Emperor Qianlong, China became the mightiest and most prosperous nation on earth. For China, the 18th century marked the beginning of a golden age. The first Buddhist monastery in Tibet, Samyi, served as the architectural model for the rear area. Unlike the Chinese section, its symbolism is entirely religious. The Mahayana pavilion is the center of Buddhist religious belief, namely Sumeru Mountain. Thus, the five-story building is located in the middle of an architectural mandala. The magnificent opulence of the pavilion was a reflection of China's vast wealth. Each one of the architectural elements that are situated close to the Mahayana pavilion adhere to the disciplined structure of the Buddhist universe. Several small halls and terraces surround the impressive pavilion that is one of the greatest examples of its kind. It attracts hordes of visitors. Each of the buildings in the Tibetan section has much significance with regard to their form, dimension and layout. Emperor Qianlong's interest in culture was similar to that of his grandfather, Kang Zhi, who created Zhang Di's summer residence. The intention of the emperor's architects to create a harmonious relationship between both nature and architecture is plain to see. Puli Si, the Temple of Universal Joy, is located in the middle of the eastern section of the sanctuary. It is similar to an older building in Beijing. The 
The eight outer temples symbolized various Chinese ethnic groups. Those who were loyal to the emperor were duly honored within his temple area. Thus, numerous characteristic cultural and traditional elements of various of the country's regions were incorporated into both art and architecture. The exquisite decor, as well as the architecture of the temple and palace complex, is an impressive bequest of a glorious past. Here also, symbolism played an important role. The location, size and design of the buildings were intended to represent a harmonious whole. The main administrative building within the Pulisi Temple is the circular Dawn Pavilion, Zhuguangge. It's a replica of the Heaven Temple in Beijing. The original building in Beijing is considerably taller. It dates back to 1421 and for many years was closely associated with the power of the emperor. The Chinese sovereigns undertook ritual ceremonies and due to the temperate climate they enjoyed plentiful harvests. The Dawn Pavilion and Puli Si Temple each correspond to the traditional form and style of a classic Han monastery. Following a military and political victory in 1766, the Chinese Emperor Qianlong ordered construction of the beautiful main and secondary halls. In the middle of the 18th century, the rebellious Jungar tribes in East Turkestan were successfully defeated. So, peace returned once more. Construction of the temple also showed respect for the religion of the defeated country. After defining the border areas and as China's acknowledgement as being the most important sovereignty, the Chalkas and Kazakhs frequently sent their princes to Changdi. In spite of their indisputable beauty, and during the planning and construction of the eight other temples, it was agreed that these buildings would always be of less importance than the palace. For the emperors of the Qing dynasty, the eight outer temples were an artistic method of retaining diplomatic relations with their provinces. Moreover, the Manchu sovereigns felt obliged to maintain and protect the literature, art and architecture of the Chinese people. Although ethnically the powerful Qing emperors Kangxi, Yongzheng and Qianlong did not originate from China, their souls were most certainly Chinese. Under their rule, the vast land of China had experienced astonishing economical and cultural success during the course of a single century. In the 18th century, China had become the greatest and most prosperous empire in the world. 
the magnificent summer residence of the King Emperor and its surrounding buildings are a glorious and remarkable demonstration of ultimate power.